Hey, good morning, gang, and welcome to a bald eagle fishing adventure. And today I'm not uh, fishing, obviously. Today I'm doing some maintenance, and I'm doing maintenance on my trailer, uh, my boat trailer. So, what I really wanted to go over with you guys, this is something that I'm, I'm really, you know, very passionate about, um, because something really bad happened to me many years ago with my old boat and trailer that I had, and um, it could have been really, really bad. I ended up losing a wheel um, on my trailer um, due to a, uh, a bearing that uh, unfortunately just let go. And um, that was really my fault. Um, you know, uh, there's, I'm gonna get into the reason behind why that uh, the, the bearing had failed, um, but uh, yeah, this is one of those things that sometimes it just, um, we, you know, overlook, we neglect it. You know, we, we take good care of our boats. We, you know, we make sure that all the electrical and the engine is working properly and we service the engine and all that good stuff. But sometimes the trailer just gets neglected. And um, I, I see this happen almost once a year on my way out to Bodega or coming back from Bodega and there's a boat and trailer and a vehicle on the side of the road and a wheel has been, you know, spit off that trailer and, um, and it's usually due to a faulty bearing. That's, that's typically what happens. I was really fortunate with mine that I didn't have my boat tip on its side because I have dual axle trailer and um, the brake system actually held the uh, wheel in place. Um, so I was really, really fortunate. If it had have been uh, probably the front wheel um, where there isn't a brake, it could have easily uh, tipped on its side by losing that wheel completely. And unfortunately, I have seen this out going to Bodega where uh, a boat was laying on its side and um, you know the, the, the boat's destroyed, the trailer's destroyed, the truck had quite a bit of damage to it because it went off into a ditch and it, it was just horrible. So anyways, I'm really hoping that this may help you guys or maybe even if you don't have a boat and trailer, maybe you know someone that does and you can share this information with them. Um, and you know, this, this applies to all trailers. So utility trailers, a, a camper trailer, I mean, you know, these all have the same kind of, uh, you know, wheels and bearings and so forth. But marine especially, um, and this is where I'm going to get into what happened with mine, wheel bearings and so forth uh, for marine is very different than any other that you would use for a trailer or for a vehicle. So one of the first things I want to go over um, is tires. So the tires on the trailer. And I'm going to show you something that... Um, that you can look for on your trailer uh, and your trailer tires um, that can also help with if there's going to be a problem with the tire. And typically t uh, trailer tires, they can get rocked and that's something that you have to kind of watch for is when the tire is starting to deteriorate. And one of the things that you will find is a checking that actually kind of starts on the um, on the uh, front edge of the tire. So this is kind of what you're going to be looking for. So here's my here's the trailer tire that I just took off, and I'm going to put some light on here. And you can't see it on here um, because actually, thank goodness, my tires are in pretty decent shape. Um, but you would want to look anywhere up in this area, right on this edge, or even on the on the side wall of the uh, of the tire for check marks. Almost looks like crow's feet. And if you start seeing a bunch of check marks on your on your front edge of your tires, that's your tire starting to break down, and it is time for replacement. Um, the other thing that I also look at is the actual tread. Typically, trailer tires, they're not going to wear down like you would find on a car trailer or a, a, a vehicle, um, just because they don't get that much use uh, as much as a car or truck would. 
Um, so they're not going to wear down, but they will get to a point where they're, the tire just starts to go bad. And you could actually get chunks of tire starting to, to come off. So that's something else that you want to look at. And um, really kind of just looking at uh, for those check marks. That's going to be the very first sign. My tires are nice and smooth. Um, there's no check marks on here. They look great. So I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. I typically replace my trailer tires about every 10 years. Um, or sooner if I happen to start seeing those check marks. But um, these were done about uh, five years ago, and uh, they're in beautiful shape. And I'm also going to go over real quick of what I do to kind of protect them um, because one of the biggest problems for tires is sunlight. It just destroys the rubber. So we'll go over that here in a second. So what I wanted to show you is... Okay, obviously here's the uh, you know the the wheel that I've taken off, and uh, that's the axle and the and the hub at this point. But right next to it is um, my other tire that I have on here, and I just have a garbage bag that I've put over the tire, and it's a cheap way to take care of the the tire itself, keep the sun off of it, the UV uh, rays from burning it up. And uh, it works. It works phenomenal. Uh, and it's a cheap way to, you know, just protect your tires. And this will help them last longer. So, anyways, just a little tidbit. You can see the other uh, two over there. And uh, that's that's what I do. So, anyways, just a little tidbit. All right. So, what I wanted to show you here, um, we're getting ready to um, get the bearing out of here. And this is a bearing buddy, um, absolute must uh, for trailers and um, I'll be getting that off here in a second. I've already removed the caliper, um, and there's two bolts, and most all the disc brake ones, they have these two bolts right here on each side. You're going to need to uh, pull those out, and then your caliper will come right out, and you can just set it off to the side like this for the time being. So that's pretty much it. Let's get started on here. Let's get started. So here we go. So just give this a little tap. Pops right out. Okay. That's pretty much it right there. We'll set this aside. Now, lots of towels. So let's get started with this. All right. Let's give this a little wipe in here. And what we should find in here is a cotter pin. We're going to need to get that removed. And there it is. Okay, so that's the cotter pin tail right here. And we're going to bend that up out of the way. Anyways, let's go with that. Thing I want to do is set this over here. Yeah, let's get another one out. Okay. Well, let's take the needle nose. Let's see if we can first just bend this tab out. Oh, screwdriver time. There we go. Um, there we go. Okay. And push that and pull your cutter pin down. Go for it. Might take a little wiggling to make that happen, but there we go. And there's your cotter pin. Pull that out. Now, there's a little case nut. That should. If it doesn't want to come off, sometimes it doesn't, you can just 
spin it off of there. This usually retains the nut. Just like that. Let's wipe this out. As you take every every piece of this out, it's a good idea to kind of clean it up a little bit. See what you have here. So actually on this one, it's been a while since I've done this, probably two or three years, but um, some of them have a, a nut and then there's a cage that goes over it. This is actually all in one. This is all, um, kind of a cage and a nut all in one unit. So that's kind of cool. You don't have to bother with an actual cage on there. But clean it up as much as you can. You want to get as much of the old grease out of there as possible. I just give it a thorough thorough wipe out of there. And a little bit of grease left on there is not going to hurt anything. So let's do a little clean up. Okay. Set that aside. There's the cotter pin. Okay, that's good. Let's get another towel here. Okay. And all we want to do is just give this thing a little wiggle. Like that. And there's a nut here, or not a nut, but a washer. All this is just, there's the washer. Like that. And I like to put all this stuff back exactly the way um, it came out, obviously, it's very important that certain things go back exactly the same way, but you can see here there's a little little marking on this side of the washer, and there really isn't too much on this side. This perfect little round uh, line right here goes onto the actual uh, bearing, so we want to put that back onto the bearing just like that. Let's set that aside. Okay, now... Here's the bearing right there. We're gonna get this bearing out. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Hopefully you can. There is a, a bit of a little wear in here on this bearing, and you can I can actually feel it with my my fingernail. Um that could actually yeah, I mean it's it's, it's got a roughness to it. We're going to replace these bearings. So it's time. So we're going to go through the process of actually replacing these. This is not one of those things you want to take a chance on or skimp. Um, if it doesn't look right, replace it. Um, wheel failure, a bearing failure is, like I said, could be catastrophic. So we're going to go through and remove that and replace them. So I'll be taking you guys through the whole process of doing so. All right, let's get back to this again. Just put them like that. And what you want to do is you want these blocks of wood to be on the edges here on each side, leaving this center open. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. So if this is going to sit on the block, this is going to sit on the block, and this is going to be in the open area. So just like that. Set this right onto the bearing at an angle, and just give it a hit. Just keep working it all the way down. Eventually it will all the way would pop out, and I think it already did. Let's turn this. bearings out. So there you go. So there's the seal. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's 
this has come out. So the seal's going to get replaced. All the, the bearing and stuff is going to get replaced. And I'll be showing you guys all of that. So anyways, that's it for right now until we're ready to uh, actually take out the seats. There's bearing seats inside here. And uh, those are going to, we're going to, we're going to get those removed. And uh, I got to clean all this grease and stuff up out of here. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to kind of see if I can show you these uh, seats that I'm talking about. And there's one for uh, each of the bearings. So, and they do have to be replaced. So anyways, that's one bearing there. That's a bearing seat right here and then there's one on this side too and let's see if we can clean that up a little bit yeah and there's the other one so both of these will have to get removed so this one and this one here and we'll get those out and uh, and then we'll be pressing in the new ones. So that's it for right now, guys. I'll bring you back once we're uh, ready to do so. Hey guys, so today um, we're going to, uh, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I've got, got the new bearings. They just got in from Pacific Trailers. And I'm gonna put a link uh, on this video for Pacific Trailers because they, uh, they carry a lot of these bearings um, for a lot of uh, different size and fits and so forth. So, um, even if you don't have a Pacific trailer, um, some of their stuff may work with, uh, with your trailer. And there's a phone number. Um, you can email them uh, to find out. Uh, but these bearings, um, like I was talking about earlier, is, you know, this is what you want to use for marine applications. So anyways, they came in. And today we're going to um, remove... I was calling them a bearing seat, and um, it's actually, it is a seat, but that's not the technical name for it. The technical name or term is a bearing race. Um, so I wanted to make sure I, I got that correct for you guys. So if you need to, you know, ask them about a question of any kind or, or being using the proper term. So you have the bearing, and then there's the bearing race. It's not named a seat, um, but the bearing does seat into it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's the technical name, bearing race. So we're going to remove the old ones out of the hub and install the new ones. So let's get started. Okay, so a couple tools you're going to need. This is um, kind of a, a punch um, that you're going to want to use. Um, this, uh, you know, anything kind of with a blunt end on one end of it and also a, a little bit bigger blunt end on the other side for the hammer. Um, this, this works pretty well. I would say anything in the range of six to eight uh, inches would work uh, just fine. So this is, this is the tool that's going to go inside the hub here, and I want to show you. So what I was talking about earlier, and I'm going to get down here on this. So this right here, this... This is the bearing race. This is where the bearing actually sits onto um, the race, and then this race is pressed into the hub. So this is the, the larger bearing race. We're going to first remove the smaller one, and that's down inside here. And I, I don't know how well I'm hoping I can get enough light here so you guys can see this. Anyways, so down inside here, there's a lip. Okay, and that's the edge of the other smaller bearing race. And what we're going to do is we're going to punch this all the way around kind of evenly and remove that bearing race. You, you don't want to just hit one corner of it constantly. You kind of want to work all the way around it. Just keep tapping, keep tapping until it pushes right out. And then we'll do this side. Okay, so let's get started with that. All right, guys. So let's... Let's kind of get started here. I'm going to try to have as much visual for you guys as possible, um, but it might be a little bit difficult with light and so forth. But anyway, so there's there's the um, right there's the edge of the bearing race, uh, the front one, and we're going to start knocking on that. Okay. 
and we might actually use a screwdriver that there we go okay it's going to take a bit so just about there so yeah so there's there's the bearing there's the bearing race right down here I think it's already just about ready to come out so let's flip this over yeah so what we need to do now is I need to bring these blocks in a little bit more to have a little bit more height like that and then you can go right back down inside here again and probably knock this race right out. Ooh, almost. It's getting close. Like I said, just that's it. There it went. We're, it's out. And there is the bearing race. So, anyways, um, and uh, yeah. You do not reuse these. They get thrown out and you put new ones in. So anyways, that's that one. Let's, uh, let's flip, flip this thing over. And we're going to take the big one out now. Okay. Same procedure. So now we'll go right back inside there. And we'll give it a little knock. And we're almost there. Man, that, this one's coming out really nice. That's it. So, beautiful. There's the larger one. So, got it out. And that is taking the races out. So, you have the smaller race, and then you have the bigger one. So, anyways, just kind of show you guys. So... There they are, and we'll be installing the new ones here in a minute. So I'm going to get this hub cleaned up. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that we get as much of that old grease and stuff out of there as possible. The one thing you do not really want to do is no solvents. Um, do not use solvents on any of this stuff um, because if there's a little residue of solvent left, it can actually break down the grease that you put in there and that could cause wheel, uh, wheel bearing failure. So just give everything a really good wipe and uh, that's what you're gonna wanna do. And then always do a little inspection, make sure that everything looks pretty nice inside there, which this does. Um, it's just gonna need more and more cleanup. So once I have this all cleaned up and ready for the new races, I'll bring you guys back. All right, all right guys, so I've got the uh, hub cleaned up want to kind of give you guys a little view inside here um, hopefully you guys can see all that but it's nice and wiped and cleaned and um, did both sides so I wanted to show you there's a little bit of an area here that's kind of got a, a seat on here um, an, a, a lip and that is where the be uh, the bearing race is going to attach to it's going to come solid against this lip and that's what you want um, both sides have it. I'm going to flip this over so you can see that as well. So there's the other lip. So there's, there's, there's two lips. There's this one here. That's not it. Um, it's going to be this lip. This, this, uh, and this is the, the larger, where the larger race is going to go. It's going to sit down inside here. So here's the larger race. And you'll see that there's a taper to this race okay so the larger fatter end if you will that's what goes in first and then you have the skinnier tapered lip that faces outward so and that's going to sit down inside there and we're going to put this in uh, with a with a special tool that will uh, actually get this to seat 
all the way down onto where it needs to. And I'll show you how that goes. So anyways, so this is the brand new uh, larger race. And since these things are machined, I always make sure that I thoroughly check them over to make sure that there are no imperfections. I've never come across one that had an imperfection, but you know what? It's just better safe than sorry. Just double check everything, make sure it's nice and smooth and clean and no imperfections that feel rough or pitted or anything like that. And then this is the smaller race and this is going to go on the other side. So, um, and again, do the same thing, just kind of check it over. And I do the same thing even with the new bearings. It's, it might be a little bit more over the cautious side, but you know what? Um, I'd rather be a little more on the cautious side and spend a few extra minutes just double checking everything than have a failure. So anyways, uh, these look great and we're gonna get started. So what I wanted to go over with you, um, first off, I, I wiped everything inside here. So this is all nice and clean and I checked everything thoroughly. It, it, it looks great. Um, so the tool that I'm gonna be in, using to install these race is an actual uh, race bearing tool. And depending on the, the race that you're gonna be putting in, you can either go this direction with it or you can go with this direction with it. And I'm gonna show you why it's important to see exactly which way you're going to go with it, okay? So putting in this larger one, this larger uh, race, It doesn't go like this. You're actually gonna go, when you go to put it in, you're gonna go like this. So the tool, the part that you're gonna be using the hammer on, it's gonna sit like this, okay? And here's why. So if you were to actually use a smaller race uh, C, um, uh, tool and you went to put it inside here, you see how there's kind of a gap um, with this area here, it's pressing it's rubbing on the inside area of this race where the bearing's gonna, you could damage this, uh, this new race. So that's not gonna work. This, if you're gonna do it, see now on the smaller one, you can. So on this smaller one, this fits beautifully like that. Nice and flush, seats beautifully, and there's actually a little bit of play here in the bottom so you're not gonna damage the race by going this direction with it, okay? I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please ask me. But that, um, and also too, uh, you want the big enough tool to fit inside here. See, this fits perfectly right where it's supposed to without causing any uh, real uh, play inside here and that's what you want you want this to when it is sitting on that new uh, race that see this one would have too much play see there's there's too much wiggle room around there so this one would not work so we want to go with the bigger one and again the larger lip edge is what's going to go down inside here first so you have the tapered edge pointing up towards you and what I like to do is kind of just start it out, just pressing uh, with my finger so it's kind of sitting in there evenly, okay? So there we go, it's sitting in here evenly now. That's all Jim Dandy. Okay, now we'll take our tool, and again, I'm putting it so it's reversed. Put this on here. And let's lock it up. Okay, so there's that. This sits perfect, just like that. Now all we wanna do is just kind of balance this. I like to use about a three pound sledge, so it's got some, got some movement to it, some weight to it to help drive that down. And you just, and when you are hitting this, you'll feel it slide in, slide in, slide in, and then when it bottoms out, you're going to feel it bottom out. It's going to feel very solid. So let's go ahead and do that. 
and it actually changed tone right there. I hope you guys heard that. But then it, it has a much sharper tone to it. So, and then what I do is I give it one more tap, and that's it. That thing is all the way in. Now we'll come back out, and we'll take a look. And when you look inside here, this lip, the, the, fat bo the bottom part of the fat lip part should be nice and tight all the way up against. And it is. It's, it's beautiful. Everything is nice and even. It looks great. There's no other gaps. So this, this one is done. And it's really as simple as that. And don't worry if you, if you want to give it a third tap just, to, just for, you know, making yourself feel better, you're not going to hurt it. So give it one more. You can even give it a few more. And that's it, but it's, it's all the way in. It's, it's, it's done. So now we'll uh, flip this thing over, and we're going to put the smaller one in. Beautiful. All right. So there's that. Now, with this smaller one, there's also another lip inside here. So you'll see that there's a lip right here that the fat part of this race is going to seat against. So we'll get this in place here. And again, kind of I like to just start it out uh, just with, by hand, just kind of. And if you want, you can even um, take, a, take a smaller hammer and just kind of give it a little kind of little tap around to kind of, you don't want it too cockeyed. That's pretty good. So that's kind of got it pretty even all the way around started. Now. We'll take our tool, take this off of here, and I'll have links for these tools and everything from Amazon. I mean, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, I think I paid 25 bucks for this or something like that on Amazon. So, and it comes with a, an assortment of these uh, uh, race uh, setting tools, uh, uh, diameter tools. So. You know, you can use different ones. Anyways, so now we're going to reverse. So this way, this one's going to go like this now for this smaller bearing because this one fits inside nice. And we'll get this in place. Lock that up. Okay. And now we'll set this tool right on there. And that fits perfect to that. So now we'll do the same thing again. We'll just kind of... Give this taps all the way in. And there it is, nice and solid. We'll give it a couple more for good luck. Maybe one extra one, and that is it. That race is done. I mean, really isn't that hard. So it's just uh, doing a little understanding of how everything kind of comes together and plays out. And anyways, that's in there. Beautiful. The races are done. We're actually ready now to start greasing. Right, guys. So what I'm going to show you now is how to pack your wheel bearings and um, go over also the grease that I use. And the grease that I use is Evan, Evan Rude Johnson uh, Triple Guard Grease. And um, anyways, yeah, you can see it right here, Triple Guard Grease. This, this should come up a little bit better on the tube. I get a, a pound, 16 ounces of this in the, in the jar, and then I get one to two tubes of this to go in my grease gun. And I use the, um, uh, the tub to actually pack the wheel bearings, and you'll see why. And then I use this in the grease gun, uh, the tube in the grease gun, for filling the uh, bearing buddies after they're in place. And I'll show you how that goes. So anyways, um, this, this stuff is really incredible. I've used different greases uh, over the years, and I found this stuff to be the best. And it was actually a friend of mine that worked at a, um, a marine shop, um, mechanic shop, that uh, turned me on to this stuff. This stuff is phenomenal. It does not harden. It does not wash out. Um, it, it, it has all the great corrosion protection that you would need for especially salt water applications. So this stuff's the bomb. It's not cheap, but I think like this tub was like 25 bucks and these are like around 20 something a piece as well. Uh, so they're not cheap, but 
this stuff, man, I mean, it, it, it's amazing product. And, um, I'll have links to it. Uh, I buy this through Amazon because sometimes this stuff's a bit hard to find. Um, so Amazon seems to carry it on a regular basis. So I'll have links for it. All right, let's get started. You have a, a grease packing tool for, uh, bearings. Um, then you can use that. If you don't have one, like I don't have one, um, this is what I'm going to show you. You can use your hands to pack these wheel bearings, and it works phenomenal. I've used, I've done this this type of deal for years. So inside the wheel bearing, okay. So here's the taper. You can see this is a little tighter edge here. This is your more of an open edge on the wheel bearing. Um, what we want to do is get the grease forced up inside that groove, inside the cavity of where the bearings sit. And um, anyways, so I'm going to show you how to do that with your hands. So let's get started. So what I do is I take the bearing and I just scoop out a nice dollop of this, like so, and I put that right on the palm of my hand, just like so. Okay, make like a little cup in your hand. And then all you want to do Using the bigger side of the wheel bearing, uh, the uh, this kind of open part of the bearing, is just tap it. Just tap it onto the grease and the palm of your hand. And what you're doing is you're forcing that grease up inside the cavity. And I'll give it two or three taps, and then I'll rotate the bearing around a little bit. And I'll just keep doing this over and over until I start seeing the grease coming up through. And... Eventually, that's what you will find. It takes a little bit, and if, obviously, if you have the, the tool for this, it makes it a little easier. But if you're like me, where you're, you know, you're just doing bearings once in a blue moon, um, you know, it may not be advantageous on having the tool for it, um, especially since you can just do use your hand to do this. So, anyways, this is uh, this is all you have to do, and you just keep packing, and I'll show you what it looks like when the grease is coming up through. So. Takes a little bit getting this all worked in through here. And you can actually feel that the play in the bearing kind of starts to subside and it starts to tighten up a little bit. Um, so you can actually starting, you can start seeing some of the grease starting to push up through now. So anyways, keep doing this. I just keep working it all the way around. can see the grease starting to push up now. See it starting to form up inside there? So it's coming all the way up through. And there it is, look at, see how it's pushing up through? That's, that's exactly what you want. And you just keep doing that. Keep working it all the way around until that is all the way completely packed. And that is packing your wheel bearings. So if you have ever come across somebody talking about packing wheel bearings, this is exactly what they're doing. And the tool that they use, um, all it does is it compresses the grease into the bearing cavity, just pretty much like what we're doing here. Um, like I said, so I just find, you know, that since I don't really do this a lot, this just works fine for me. So, and I just keep turning it around and turning it around until you can see a lot of the grease is already gone. It's all packed up inside there. So. That's what you're looking for. And this bearing is just about done. You just want to make sure that you see that, that grease pushing up on that edge. And I'll even probably put just a little bit more. That's pretty much it. This thing's done. That's it, guys. And I'll just kind of slap the whole thing against the palm of my hand a few times. Making sure everything has got grease all the way up there, but it does. It's all the way around. And that's it. Your, this wheel bearing is packed. And then we'll do the front wheel bearing as well. So um, same idea with the smaller bearing. That's all you need to do. So anyways, guys, that's it. Wheel bearing is packed. Now you know. <laughs> There you go. Just put a nice, really nice, good coating.
of nice grease all the way around. So, just like so. Beautiful. Gorgeous. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Beautiful. Now, so you have that taper of that bearing. So you have the smaller taper edge here and you have the larger taper edge back here. The, the smaller taper edge goes in first. So we just drop that right in there, seat that down, and there it is. That's in place. Beautiful. Okay. And that is, that bearing is in place now. And I like to just give it a little push, make sure it's seated around onto that race really nice, which it is. Here is the seal. This is the rear bearing seal. And um, we'll uh, show you how we're going to put this on. So this, we're going to tap into place as well. And again, this, we kind of want to just start out really nice and gentle and just give it little taps little taps you get one side that just didn't really kind of want to actually there, pop a little bit just be gentle just, <laughs> just gently work it eventually you'll get it So guys, I got this all in now. This is the rear uh, seal, uh, bearing seal. And you just want to tap it in enough that it becomes flush with the outer, um, with the, uh, with the outer hub. Uh, you don't want it, you don't want it sitting in deeper. You want it, you want it flush. And that's what I have right now. So this is, this is perfect. Everything is good on here. Um, and, uh, I, I will add a little bit more grease to the inside here, and then this thing is ready to put onto the spindle. All right, guys, so um, as you can see here, I've filled the cavity with all the nice grease, and I've packed the uh, front bearing too, um, so that's ready to go. And I've given the spindle um, a nice liberal amount of grease on there as well. So pretty much this is... Uh, now we're just going to button this thing up. So let's go ahead and put the spindle on, or the uh, rotor, hub and rotor. So gently slide this in place. And let's see. There we go. So that's now seated all the way up inside there. Now we put the bearing, and as you can see, it's got that taper on the bearing. So the, 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 the small tapered end goes in first with the larger tapered end sticking out. Just like that. Okay. And then the washer. So the washer, you can actually see there's a little kind of in, uh, not a groove, um, but more of a like a wear mark on here. So I want to make sure you guys can see that there's a little wear mark here. That's going to go towards the bearing and uh, the other surface out will be where the nut goes on to. So this little shiny part right here, uh, this little mark, and I would do that, you know, with any of the washers, you kind of want to put them kind of back on the way they came off. So. Anyways, again, this little wear on here is going to go towards the bearing, just like that. And then we put the nut on, and obviously this nice flat surface of the nut goes on first. And you just gently get this started in place, and that is pretty much it. We just start tightening this thing in. And this is going to have a little series of adjustment that you're going to do as you go. So anyways, so what I like to do is get it snugged up by hand first and then turn the, turn the wheel. 
Okay, just give it a give it a few good turns. Like so, what you're kind of doing is you're seating the bearings. You're getting the bearings to seat against their race. Those races. And then a little little snug a little bit more. Okay. Now, let me uh wipe my hands here. What we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a little bit here, just like so, okay, and we're going to take the pair of pliers and we're going to just kind of snug it up a little bit, I like to kind of snug it tight and sp spin it again, right? Because this grease is very thick and heavy, and so it takes a little bit. I like to kind of rotate this thing around a few times. And what you're doing is you're just getting everything to seat nicely. And then a little more on the, on the nut, snugging it up a little further. And a little bit more. And just kind of wheel it back and forth. And what, what, like I said, what I, what's happening right now is you're kind of just seating it all in place, okay? And then I go a little bit more. It'll get to a point where the nut doesn't budge any further. And at that point, so this is this is getting pretty snug now. And you can kind of feel there's starting to get a little tightness on the hub. Um, we don't really necessarily want that. So what we'll do is we'll, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you, but we're gonna probably back up the nut just a smidge, and that should do a, take care of it. And as long as we have the hole lined up for the cotter pin, we're good. So I'll do it a, one more time here, a little more on there, a little more snugness. Yeah, we're just about there. And what I mean is you don't want to over tighten this nut and put so much pressure on the bearing because you do that you create uh, too much heat on the bearing and it will cause a premature disintegration of that bearing. So that's why you don't you don't want it too over tightened. But you do want to first initial to snug it up. Yeah, this thing is just about there. It's about as snug as we're going to get. Now, what we want to do is we have to make sure we get these. See, there's these little prongs here. These little prongs. And then there's the hole on the spindle. We have to make sure we get the slot and the spindle all lined up. And there it is. That's it right there. So, now... What I want to see I want to see about backing that up just a smidge because I think it's just a little too tight. Okay. So let's see where this is at now. Here it is. Yeah, and I think that that's right about where we want it. So let's pull this pin back out. Let's grab hold of the nut and see. That's actually better. It was a little too tight. So I think you'll feel if it's too tight or not. So yeah, I, that's better. I think that's where we want it. Yeah.
That's it. Okay. So on this cotter pin, you'll see that there's a um, there's a longer shank and a shorter one. The longer shank is going to go out towards you when you go to put this in, like so. Okay. And I'll show you why, because that's the one that's going to get bent back. go. Okay, so I bend this longer one back like this. And push that all the way in. Something tight there. And then this other part of the uh, cotter pin, we're going to snip it inside just like that. So we want to make sure it's nice and inside the hub. Okay, and uh, I just like to tap this down a little bit, and that's it, guys. New bearing is installed, and this is got a nice spin to it there's not there's not any real heavy drag to it feels great so that's it just wanted you to you'll you'll get a kind of an idea i mean it just it spins properly and and it's not over tight so that's exactly what you're looking for all right okay. guys so i have the uh, bearing buddy in place there's a little uh, zert fitting inside here and uh, we're going to attach our grease gun that has that triple guard grease sleeve in there, the tube. So let's snap that on just like so and start pumping this thing up. And there we go. And it's going to take a bit because this thing is going to fill that whole cavity full of grease. And you'll know when this thing is full because this blue part of the bearing buddy will actually start to push out. And when that happens, this thing will be completely full. There it starts to come. You can start seeing it starting to, to pull out a little bit. And that, we stop right about there. And what I like to do is kind of, oh, here, let's spin this a little bit. What this does is it kind of actually draws some of that grease on the inside. Okay. So, and I will give it a little bit more. And that's it. Once it starts to pop out like that a little bit, I don't want to overfill it. And once you have this on the road for a little bit, uh, it's always a good idea to go back and add just a little bit more grease to it just to check, make sure that everything is nice and filled in there. But that is it, guys. This thing is complete.